If you're like me, you're tired of hearing the same old stories rehashed through TV and movies. What's better than recycled fiction? Stories about real people. And some of them are true. Everyone has a story. Some good, some not so good, and some that have shaped our world. This is where you'll hear wholesome tales of wit, wisdom, history making, and maybe even a bit of intrigue. This is episode number nine, Frozen Assets. All the money in the world could not save Jack when a massive iceberg took the Titanic to the depths of the North Atlantic that cold April night in 1912. However, Jack certainly was not the first of his kind to encounter problems with icy waters while crossing the pond. Before Jack's ill-fated voyage, one of his ancestors had also been trapped on an icebound ship in the Atlantic Ocean. In the late 1700s, a young German entrepreneur named Johann held hopes of finding his fortune in an upstart country known as the United States of America. After the American Revolutionary War ended, Johann had brought some musical instruments to resell in the newly formed country. For four years leading up to his voyage to America, Johann worked alongside his brother in London, making and selling musical instruments while gaining a basic understanding of business practices. With the equivalent of about $25 and seven flutes as stock in trade, he boarded a ship in 1783 and set sail across the Atlantic. The ship reached Chesapeake Bay during the frigid late January of 1784. Johann's ship became stranded in brackish ice, unable to land at port for another two months. The setback didn't hinder Johann in the least. To the contrary, he turned this near disaster into an opportunity. He learned from a fellow German passenger that there was a path to prosperity to be found in the fur trading business. With the new world came new industries, as well as newfound wealth for those who also understood how to access the old markets of Europe and Asia. By the time they docked, Johann had decided that instead of selling flutes and fiddles, he would get into the fur trade. Johann finally arrived in New York in March of 1784, joining his brother who was already living there. Soon after, he traveled back to London with a shipment of beaver pelts and other furs to sell. In 1786, Johann married, and with his new bride's dowry valued at around $300, they set up his own shop on Water Street in Lower Manhattan, in the area now known as the Financial District. During this time, Johann and his wife lived frugally and were committed to effective stewardship of the business. Within a dozen years of setting foot on American soil, Johann's acumen in the booming continental and international fur trading business enabled him to buy a small fleet of ships and establish an import and export business in the world's fastest growing port. In addition to beaver pelts and other furs, Johann entered the lucrative markets for tea, silk, sandalwood, spices, opium, and of course, musical instruments. He utilized his contacts and personal shipping fleet to establish trade routes from New York to as far away as Hawaii and China. Johann's business flourished. By 1800, he had a quarter of a million dollars. That would be about four and a half million dollars in today's money. When Lewis and Clark returned from their famous expedition in 1806, Johann capitalized on the Louisiana Purchase by expanding his fur trade business as far as Oregon in the Pacific Northwest. By 1809, Johann had become the world's dominant fur trader and America's first multi-millionaire. He parlayed his early business success into convincing politicians, not the least of whom was President Thomas Jefferson, to grant special trading rights, thereby increasing his wealth exponentially. By the time the War of 1812 broke out, Johann was so affluent that he was able to help the United States government finance the war. In 1817, Congress passed legislation that restricted foreign traders from U.S. territories. Johann was the beneficiary of this policy, as it effectively swept away any competition from nearby Canada. By the 1820s, the fur market had begun to dwindle. Johann wisely expanded into real estate, securing his remarkable rise to wealth and power. Recognizing the strategic importance of Manhattan, he began buying up so much property that he became known as the city's landlord. Johann made vast profits in real estate such that he sold his fur trading business and other commercial interests in 1834 so that he could dedicate himself exclusively to his real estate holdings. This became the foundation of a fortune that Johann would pass on to future generations of his family. When he died in 1848, at the age of 84, Johann's fortune had grown to $20 million. In today's money, that would be well over $600 million. None of these things would have happened had he not languished on a ship in the icy Atlantic during those two months. 
Johann Jacob Astor's fortunes began on a wooden ship stranded on ice. Yet all the money in the world couldn't save his great-grandson from a tragic fate on that cold April night in 1912. Nearly a century after building an empire based on shipping, an Atlantic iceberg exacted a terrible price on the Astor family, sending John Jacob Astor IV, also known as Jack, to a watery death aboard the steel behemoth christened the Titanic. That's his story. Wasn't that interesting? I think it's interesting. That's why I'm telling the story. There are as many stories as there are people, and each one can be entertaining and maybe even something to learn from. They're even better when you can share the stories you hear with the people you love, especially kids. You're listening to the Everyone Has a Story podcast, a production of realmedia.us. I'm Rodney Powell. If you can hardly wait for the next episode and want to make sure you don't miss anything, add it to your favorites. There's still more stories. We'll never run out. Meet you back here for the next episode, because everyone has a story. Thank mm-hmm. you.